everybody, and welcome to another segment of Accounting Imbalances How Do I series. In this segment, we get to talk about how do I calculate diluted EPS with stock options, which is one of the biggest pieces of calculating that diluted EPS. Now, as a reminder, basic EPS is calculated by every corporation that provides an income statement. They have to record it. It has to show up at the bottom of the income statement and be rounded to two decimal places. Diluted EPS is only shown by companies with a complex capital structure. And by complex, we don't mean that they might have three different versions of common stock and two different types of preferred stock and multiple issues of voting rights. No, no. What we mean is that they have outstanding options or warrants or convertible securities that allow investors to purchase common stock without a special approval from the board of directors. Meaning, I've given stock options to my employees, I have issued some preferred stock that is convertible, I don't have to vote to do a seasoned equity offering or a secondary equity offering in order for those individuals to buy or acquire common stock shares. That's what makes a capital structure complex. And under US GAAP, I have to show what effect all of those outstanding convertible options or warrants will have on my earnings per share. And so what we'll see is a company with a complex structure showing a basic EPS. This is what we really made for our owners per share this year and a diluted EPS. If all of those who could reasonably convert their shares into stock were to go ahead and do that or had done that during this last fiscal year, instead of this EPS, you would have only made this diluted EPS. So the diluted EPS number is imaginary. It's make believe. It's for comparison purposes. Here's what you really made, basic EPS. Here's how that would have changed if and only if all of these other options to buy stock were used. And of course, a big part of that process is figuring out stock options. So let's take a look at an example. Now stock options are a form of warrant. It's a right to buy a share of stock or multiple shares of stock at a certain price. Under GAAP, we will always incorporate stock options if it makes sense for the individuals to use them. So for example, if I have a stock option that allows me to buy stock at $10 a share and the current market price is $8 a share, I would never do that. Why would I pay more than I could pay by just going to the open market and buying them? Since I wouldn't ever use those options, I don't put them into my diluted EPS calculation. But if the price is anything over $10 a share, then I assume that people could start using these options and I include them in my diluted EPS. Here's an example of Cougar Company, and this actually builds off a previous example that we calculated in another of our How Do I segments. And we calculated basic EPS for Cougar Company of $3.73. It was $29,737,500 in our numerator, that was our net income minus our preferred stock dividend, divided by our weighted average shares outstanding, which were $7,962,500. In addition, though, to that basic information that allowed us to calculate this 373, the Cougar Company also has 243,750 stock options outstanding. Each option allows the holder to purchase one share of Cougar Company's common stock for $5 per share. The stock price on December 31st was $10.50, the highest price during the year was $18.50, and the low was $5.50, the average price over the year was $12.50 per share we want to know what they would report as diluted EPS for the year. And I'm going to start this process by putting in what I already know. So here's my numerator, my denominator. We're going to do basic and then we're going to do the change. Our numerator originally was 297,500 and our basic denominator was 7,962,500. dollars basic meaning basic earnings per share. Now we've got to figure out the change and two important things with stock options. The first is that they will never change the numerator because if people were to exercise these options, it would not change my net income and it would not change what I pay to my preferred stockholders. So my change 
is going to be zero dollars on the top of my EPS calculation. What is going to change is my denominator and the important part to remember in calculating the effect of stock options or other warrants is remembering that FASB has us assume that we would take any cash they give us in exercising their options, buy as many options as we can off the market, and then we would only issue the remaining shares. Okay, so it's the same idea as saying if someone were to say you owe me $100, but I owe you 10, we wouldn't say we're out $100, we would say we're out 90, the 100 minus the 10. Same idea here. So I like to break this down into steps. And the first step is to determine, step number one, to determine how many shares can be purchased. And in this case, it's 243,000, whoops, let's, let's put this in as an equation, 243,750 times one, because each option only allows you to buy one share. But there are options out there that allow you to buy two or three shares. Number two, determine how much cash you will get from the options. Maybe we'll get rid of that question mark. Okay, so how much cash we will get? Well, if we've got 243,000 shares coming in and each of those is going to give us $5, then we're going to get cash of 243,750 times $5. So we're going to get 1,218,750 dollars. So let's put that in here. Step number three is to determine how many shares we could acquire. So if I were to take that 1,218,750 and go out on the market, how many shares could I buy? And so I'm gonna take this value and I'm gonna divide by a share price. And we have lots of share prices. We know that we ended the year at 1050. We know that our high point was 1850. We know that the low was 550, but the average was 1250. And the rule is I use my average. So we're gonna put that in 1250. Now, why do we use the average instead of the high, the low, or the ending, or the beginning price? Because there is no reason to believe that this would happen on any particular day. Right? There's no reason to believe that it would happen on the first day of the year or the last day of the year or the high point or the low point. So since there's no reason to believe it would happen on any particular day, we just use the average for the year. If I divide this 1218,750 by 1250, I end up, again, I'm going to format here. There we go. I would be able to buy 97,500 shares. So let's put that over here. The last step then, determine how many new shares you need to issue. So if I need 243,750 shares, I can buy 97,500, then I'm going to need to issue fresh 146,250 shares. That's what FASB requires. They don't allow us to believe that we would use excess cash or other assets to buy any more shares on the market. We have to assume that we would use the cash they gave us and the rest we would issue as brand new shares, which means I would increase my denominator up here by 146,250. So my updated values will be 29,737,500 plus zero. My updated denominator and we'll change the format there because that's going to bug me. There we go. Will be 8,108,750, which gives me my diluted EPS after incorporating these warrants of $3.67. Or in other words, if all of these option holders had used their options, each owner would have gotten about six cents less from $3.73 down to $3.67. And that's how I calculate diluted EPS with stock options. And hopefully 
you now feel very comfortable with that process. In later videos, we'll talk a little bit more about other important examples, including, hopefully at some point, more detail about diluted EPS and what we do with other types of dilutive securities. We'll see you then. Thanks. Thanks.